information is not important. What these walls offer for you is important. Salvation. If you burn it, three hours from now the door to this house will open. Unfortunately, you only have two hours to live. Right now, you are breathing in a deadly nerve agent. You've been breathing it since you arrived here. Those of you familiar with the Tokyo subway attacks will know its devastating effects on the human body. The only way to overcome it and walk out that door is to find an antidote. Okay, so here we have some materials. We have wire cutters, a crap ton of zip ties, an electric drill, drill bits, and a rubber mallet. That's important. I've cracked PVC before, and measuring tape, and a Sharpie. So I have a foam head I bought at Michael's, some half inch PVC pipe. I have a shirt, a jacket, pants, and some dress shoes. They're all child size I got at Goodwill. I also have a PVC pipe cutter the electronics to make him talk, some red spray paint, a bunch of PVC fittings, and a tricycle I bought on eBay that I had to put together, which was not fun at all. And here we are marking the PVC in one and a half inch sections to put the different fittings together. And then I went ahead and I marked some longer pieces as the connecting pieces between like the, for his arms or his legs and I'm just cutting that with the PVC cutter. So there you can see all the PVC pieces that I'm about to put together. The rubber mallet is important um, just because the PVC will crack. Um, these are all pressure fit. I didn't use glue for any of this. My intent was to be able to take them apart later. I probably never will. Probably should have glued it. Oh well, live and learn. So here I'm hammering all the pieces together and I'm starting to make the top frame for his shoulders and his arms. So I'm just hammering them all down so they're nice and snug. And I probably beat it against the carpet a few times just to make sure that it's all straight. And then I'm going to put those pieces together. So this is going to be like his collarbone and his shoulders. And just hammering all that together. Should have bought moisturizer for my knees. And just making sure that one piece is straight up. And then I'm going to make his hip bones. I'm just going to connect those together, and then that's where his legs are going to come out of. So that's basically his butt. And just make sure it's nice and snug. And looks like it is. Just flatten it out. Perfect. So here's the finished top piece. So this is going to stick straight out, and that's where his head's going to go. And then these are going to be his shoulders and then the piece that comes down is going to be connected by some 45 degree elbows to make his arms all right so here we have his shoulders and his hips so the way it's going to work is it's going to be a wide rectangle like that And that'll create his body. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some long pieces to connect the top and bottom together. I couldn't find any PVC fittings that had like a three-way connection with like a vertical output coming straight out the top. So I basically just drilled some holes and some long sticks of PVC and then wire tied the whole thing together. Um, and it ended up working out pretty well. I was super surprised. Should I have glued it? Probably. I didn't though and it worked out fine. So now I'm just connecting the whole thing together. So you can see it's basically a long rectangle and the whole thing. I probably used about you know, like 58 wire ties. So then I was like, hey Steve, you had good luck with the wire ties. Why don't you wire tie it to the tricycle? And this ended up not working. Uh, it was sturdy when I was done there. But after I tried moving a little bit, it immediately loosened up just because the seat of the tricycle is not a regular shape. So then I drilled some holes into the metal of the seat and then I had some bolts come through the bottom and I secured it that way and that was basically perfect.
I think I used about three bolts just to keep it sturdy. Okay, so I'm just going to put in some connecting pieces for his arms. I didn't end up keeping the arms like that. Um, they didn't really fit, especially with the jacket that I had purchased. It wasn't really going to work out, so I'll show you. I made some different arms later. So here I'm just going to create the legs. So I'm taking off those PVC sections because I realized I needed them to move freely because those are basically his hip joints. So I'm sawing that off. And then what I use for a lot of projects actually is some green tomato steaks. So I drilled the holes through those elbows there. And then that way the little joints can rotate freely. You should probably keep a saw that close to your fingers. And then what I did was the little end caps for the tomato steaks, I put them right on both ends and that just keeps the PVC from sliding off. It actually worked really well. Then I put in some extra pieces for his thighs. And then more zip ties. So I drill a hole in the upper piece and the bottom piece, put a wire tie through the hole, and then I will connect those with another wire tie. spray painted the shoes red and bolted them through the pedal on the bottom so there you can see the joint that I made with the wire ties so his knee can basically move freely okay so this is the finished armature for the most part um, it's mostly PVC for the connections at the knees, uh, I just linked two pieces of PVC with some wire ties there. Uh, the shoes have a wire tie going through the center of them, and uh, so does the piece of PVC going through his legs. There's a hole there, so the wire tie goes through the hole. So that acts as his ankle, and then I just shove the pool needle down into there. And then uh, the extra padding up here, keeps the knee from collapsing because otherwise the knee would do that and it would go the other way so that'll keep that from happening uh, for the arms the PVC ends about here and then I cut a V into the pool noodle to bend it at the elbow and then I stuck a piece of PVC sticking through here and then I just duct taped it and put a wire tie around it and then that'll keep the arm bent without having to create um, an elbow using a 45 degree elbow, which is what I used there. And yeah, so when you what if his knees move? And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Look at that. It's like butter. Ugh. Good job, Steve. Okay, so now it's time to dress him. So I'm just gonna, I cut the pants in half so it's one flat piece and then I wrapped it around and then I attached it with bobby pins to the pool noodles and it basically keeps in place. I'm gonna put the shirt on, put his arms through and then button him up. And then everything was too long, so I ended up trimming everything. I, I folded his sleeves back. I figured you wouldn't see it underneath the jacket, so it didn't really matter. And just more safety pins, keep everything in place. And do the other side. I like how buff his chest looks. I tried tucking it in, realized that wouldn't work. Pulled out the scissors, and then just trimmed the shirt. Also, you won't see it because of the jacket. And just button that last button. Cool. And then put on his little jacket. It was so cute. He looks like a little sea captain. Look at those buttons. And then I button that up. The arms are very long. I had to roll them. Uh, and he looked a little fat, so what I ended up doing was cinching it in the back, and that's basically what it looks like. Stuffed some gloves and wire tied them to the handlebars, 
and then I eventually uh, duct taped them to the pool noodles. And there he is, he's so cute. I was really happy with how he came out. I think he looks pretty great. All right guys, so here we have my favorite website. Uh, this is FryProps.com. This is where I get all my equipment to make my animated props. Um, so I'm a big fan of their Peekaboo prop controllers here. This is the Peekaboo Junior. It's a recordable relay, so that means is you can record a show and you can turn two relays on and off uh, based on the recording that you create by pressing the on and off buttons for the relay. And then for the sound, I like their Bootoons MP3 player. So it's triggerable, so you can tell it when to start playing sounds. You can have an ambient sound. You could also load a bunch of sounds on your SD card here, have it play a different sound every time it's triggered. So Jigsaw says about six or seven different things. And that's pretty cool. And then to control the air cylinder, uh, I like their Peekaboo controller pneumatic kit. So it comes with the Peekaboo controller, motion sensor, speaker, audio cable. Most importantly, it comes with the air cylinder. You can choose which size. And then um, all the stuff you need to connect it to the solenoid valve. And the solenoid valve is what controls the airflow to the piston that makes it go in and out. And that's how Jigsaw moves forward and back. And then to trigger the whole thing, I like to use their hand trigger. It's a big red button with a very long cable, and I have that installed in my Do You Want to Play a Game podium, and that's how they decide when they want to turn Jigsaw on and off. So now I'm going to pull out the rig, and I'm going to show you in person how everything's connected. Also, I'm not paid by Fry Props. I just really like them as a company. Their customer service is really great, and they also have a super helpful YouTube channel. I'm going to post some links in the description about how to connect all the different things that I showed you here. Because when it's all together, it looks really confusing, but their step-by-step -step videos are actually way more detailed than this one is going to be. So if you want more information on that, feel free to leave a comment or just head over to their website and take a look around. They're actually really great. Okay, so here I have my jigsaw rig set up. Um, it's not fully set up, but you can see all the components that I have. So what I would do in this case is I would hit record. Then I would hold down the number one and let go. And then that would trigger the boot tunes to play the sound. And then I would hold down number two. And that would tell the solenoid valve here to cause the air piston to extend. And I would hold down number two for the entire length of time that I want it to be extended and that'll keep power running to the solenoid and keep the air piston out. So then when I let go, the air piston would retract and Jigsaw would go back into his little house that I had built for him. So what I did was I found a length of my longest audio track and I held down the number two for that amount so that he does not retract before he finishes speaking any of his preset phrases. Then based on what you name the files on the SD card, it will tell it which sound to play, which volume, that kind of thing. And all the instructions are on frightprops.com. So someone will walk up to the podium, they will press the trigger. The trigger signal will go to the solenoid valve. The solenoid valve will extend. Then the boot tunes will start playing the sound. The sound will go through the amplifier, and the amplifier will control Jigsaw's mouth. That feeling running through your body is fear. Then when it's done, the sound will stop. We're mostly just Power will be cut to the solenoid valve. The air piston will decompress again. Jigsaw will go back inside. And then the whole thing is reset. Uh, I have an ambient sound set up. It's the sound of Jigsaw laughing, so that will play every two minutes or so uh, if no one goes over and presses his button. And that's basically it. Um, I plan on doing another more in-depth video about how I set up pneumatics and air-powered props for anyone who is interested in how I do that. Um, so that will be coming in the future. Uh, hopefully when the weather's a little better, I'll be able to go into storage and get some of that stuff out to show you guys. Again, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, uh, make sure you subscribe. I will be putting out more videos in the future. If you have any questions or want to know anything else, if there's anything I missed, I'm sure there is, please, please, please leave a comment. I would love for everyone to get involved with this. If you like the video, make sure you go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, make sure you don't tell me because it'll hurt my feelings. Okay, guys. This is Steve from Falcon Cemetery, and I uh, will see you next time.